afflictions, wash me completely from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. My transgressions, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brethren. We are ambassadors of Christ. God making his appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him prone to sin who knew no sin, so that in him he might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then we entreat you not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at the acceptable time, we working together with him, then we entreat you not to accept grace of God in vain. For he says, at the acceptable time, I have listened to you and helped you on the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Kindly arise for the gospel acclamation. not your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, Sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by men. Truly, I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your arms may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. 
But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. And pray to your father, who is in secret. And your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you fast, do not look this mild like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good. Today we begin the Lenten season with the Ash Wednesday. After the homily, we are going to bless the ashes and administer them to our foreheads. And as we administer the ashes, we either say, remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return, or we say, repent and believe the gospel. The significance of today's celebration is to help us to get into the season properly. It is a journey with the Lord. And this journey was done in the wilderness for 40 days. The wilderness is not a place of comfort. It's not a place of leisure. It is a place of deprivation. It's a place of survival in quotes. It's a place you have to adjust in order to continue moving on. And so we are called at this season of Lent to self-denial, we are called to prayer, and we are called to almsgiving. These are the pillars of the Lenten season. Our Lord Jesus Christ reminded us in the gospel of these pillars and the importance of ensuring that we participate in these observances with our whole heart and not to please anyone or to be noticed, but that we are personally convinced this is a journey we go alone with our Lord. A journey of sober reflection. We continue to remunerate on our sins, on our unworthiness, like we had in the first reading. We tear our hearts. We remember that we are sinners, that we are unworthy. And we cry to him for help, for assistance, for healing. It is a time we deny ourselves of some comfort so that we may be able to journey with the Lord. And we do so so that he may fill us with his grace and with his blessings, that we may be strengthened. Brothers and sisters, if you are preparing for an exam, you put extra time in your studies. Sometimes even burn the midnight candle. If you are preparing for an event or a project, you sacrifice a lot. You put your time, your resources, your energy into that so that it may come out successfully. The focus of this season is that we may rise with him on Easter, filled with his graces and with his blessings. But the journey will determine how much or how ready we are to receive these graces. We make that resolution today, here and now. We make the resolution to deny ourselves of some comfort and practically ensure that we do so. Not like in the way we make our New Year resolutions and abandon them 
but this time around, ensure that we practice it. There is called Lenten observances, something we do always. We continue doing and doing. It may be, for instance, a simple practical, we normally love to take like three bottles of beer. So, okay, I will take one. The other two, I keep it or I give it to the poor. Oh, I love to watch Z World. I love to watch Nollywood. I, watch to, I love to watch Hollywood. I deny myself some of these comforts. And we reflect and journey with God. We fast not just from food, but also from sin. From all sinful tendencies, the words of our mouth, our thoughts, our actions, those deeds that are displeasing to God, those things that naturally would make him not pleased with us, we avoid them. We avoid occasions of sins, places, persons, things that will lead us to sin. Our phones, those uh, places we go with our friends that when we come back we feel that we are not worthy before God we avoid them we avoid those things we do that makes us in, unworthy and unholy before God may the good Lord strengthen us we are going to bless the ashes and we will say remember we are, you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Remember, we are dust. This body is dust. It will decay, and unto dust this body shall return. Our soul is that which belongs to God, and we must preserve it and make it holy. As we deny ourselves and participate in these Lenten observances, May God continue to bless us all through Christ our Lord. Amen. We bless the ashes. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord.
invites us to respond to the God who calls us to come back to him with all our hearts. The penance of Lent has begun. Our prayers <laughs> enrich the charity and faith of that penance. For our Pope, our Archbishop, 
our bishops elect, priests and deacons. May they be blessed in a special way at the beginning of this time of Lent, so that they will lead all the baptized along the ways of conversion and holiness. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously us. For all Christians and catechumens, that in this sacred time of Lent, we may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the whole world, that it may experience lasting peace and tranquility, and that all peoples may find ways of working together for the good of everyone, especially of the poor. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who suffer because of wars, violence, natural calamities, hatred and diseases, that they may find comfort and support as they turn to the Lord, and experience also our Christian concern and care. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have left the church, that in this time of grace and reconciliation, they may return to Christ and live once again the baptism to the full. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For, our, for ourselves, that God may stir up in our hearts the desire to rise through conversion in order to be renewed and strengthened by his grace. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered here today, that through prayer, fasting, and works of charity, we may express in our daily lives Christ's calls to conversion and holiness. And this we pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. God of mercy and compassion, look upon the petitions of penitent people. As we pray for grace at this time, let us not forget the needs of others through Christ our Lord.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins and may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of, my, of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, David, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer each other this sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Lord Jesus Christ, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
May the sacraments we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lent and fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Kindly, may we sit down for announcement. Announcements from Coverage, Justice and Peace Department, Lenten period. The Lenten period, spanning 40 days leading up to Easter, holds profound significance for Christians worldwide as a time of introspection, repentance, and spiritual renewal. Rooted in the biblical narrative of Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness, Christians embrace prayer, fasting, repentance, and acts of charity as they journey towards the celebration of Christ's resurrection. This season calls individuals to confront their shortcomings, deepen their relationship with God, and embody the values of humility, self-denial, charity, and compassion. Our merciful God is always present to show us His everlasting love through reconciliation with self, others, and creation. As the Catholic Church, this is a special time which also reminds us that we are mortal beings. This year's theme, Integrity for a Just Nation, focuses on using our integrity to build a culture of justice in Kenya. A just nation is only possible if our citizens are our people of integrity. The invitation, therefore, is to reflect on our journey of faith as baptized people of God, who should live with integrity to build a just nation rooted in just, justice, peace, unity, and love. Social justice emphasizes on fair distribution of resources, opportunities, and privileges in society. With this in mind, we will look at week one, sovereignty of the people, week two, right to clean, safe, and adequate water, week three, challenges of high cost of living, week four, religious extremism, and lastly, week five, emerging threats to the family. This week focuses on the sovereignty of the people as articulated in the Constitution. Improved government services delivery is a right of Kenyans. In our small Christian communities, we will discuss at length. Let us all participate. Let us be careful to do right, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of the people. That is 2 Corinthians, verse 8 verse 8 up to 21. May the grace of this Lenten season make us better instruments of God's call to go forth and be witnesses of social justice in our families, neighborhoods, counties, and the country at large. God is good. So on that note, as it was announced last week, in all our masses, today we have a second correction, and this one is a wild, wild appeal in order to help those who are less privileged in the society. I request the pupils to prepare the correction boxes. Choir, you're most welcome.
a special way we thank the proprietor, staff, students of Mountain View for facilitating today's liturgy. May God continue to bless you all through Christ our Lord. We rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. And have a blessed and fruitful Lenten season. Hello.